I am Omar Sanda Amadou. My guest is the Minister for Railway Development, Joe Gatti. Uh, you said in India in 2019 that Ghana's aim was to build a modern standard gauge network of approximately 400, okay, 4,000 kilometers over the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, you've been minister for four years. How many of these kilometers have you done? Be before you go there, let me just let me, just let me tell you that I said I'll meet you on 8 December. Yes. I will win that seat massively. I will come and watch you. Please. Whether or not you win, I'll still be there. Well, I'm about to walk off the set because you said whether or not. No, I said whether or not. I'll tell you that. <laughs> You're I'll a lawyer. When you go I'll to court, I win massively. You, you, know, you never conclude that you'll be... Oh, you, who told you that? Who mm. told you you don't conclude? I thought you need to have some level of... Uh, anyway, let's go. 4,000. Oh, yeah, a lawyer too. I'm hoping to be one day, uh, but I, I don't have the... You look nice. Thank you. You're three-piece, but three-piece is hot. So I, I go work, to two-piece. I work for Gatti and Gatti. You are always welcome. Um, out of 4,000 kilometers, yeah. four years, Jogate, you are the minister. How many have you constructed? How many can we really put well, well, in say the, and Out of the 15 years that Jogate said will do 4,000, Nanado has done so much out of that. Let's look at the master plan. Okay. Let's look at the master plan. I mean, first of all, every place that you see in green, all the green that you see, we finished the feasibility studies. So this is 2020 proposed master plan. This yes. is something your ministry and government has decided to do for Ghana. Yes. This is how you are connecting Ghana. Yes. Okay. Is this what, did you inherit this or you didn't? No, no. We, what, what happened was that before uh, 2008, 2009, Pusami had a lot of plans and he decided that it should all come together in a master plan. Okay. And therefore, the, la the Railway Act, which was an act, the baby of Professor Miyakofi, said that the Ghana Railway Development Authority should do a master plan. Okay. So in 2013, they did a master plan. So that's this one? This is the old one. Okay. But when we, look, and for example, they said that we'll rehabilitate the whole of the narrow gauge line. The narrow gauge line is the line that the British left to us, which is 947 kilometers. So they said that we'll rehabilitate the rest of the narrow gauge. We decided that, for example, in this one, narrow gauge is not part of it. The axle load was, I think, 21 tons. We moved the axle load to 25 tons because of the steel in Shani and so on. Mm -hmm. For example, also, uh, the speed was 120 uh, kilometers per hour. We moved it to 160 kilometers per hour. And there are other changes. For example, we are connecting to every regional capital, all the new regional capital. So this 2020 master plan, we still call it proposed because we finished it early 2020. I wanted to take it through a stakeholder consultation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, COVID and things may, so I'm going to now do a virtual stakeholder consultation for one month. Everywhere you see in green, we finish the feasibility study, we finish the uh, engineering designs. Everywhere that you have green, everywhere that finish you have green. visibility, finish the front end engineering designs. So and most of the places, that, and about half of the places that you have green, we started the process of getting people to build it. Okay, so you have western, central, and eastern lines. Is that correct? Okay, you have the western line. You have the eastern line. Then you have what we call the central spine, okay. which, which is, is for Kumasi okay. to, uh, Tamale to, to Paga. And, Paga. Okay. and then we have this eastern expansion, or we call the Ghana Burkina Interconnectivity okay. Line. Okay. So the Ghana Burkina. Then you have the um, ECOWAS one, don't you? Yeah, we also have the yeah. ECOWAS side. So but I said everywhere you see in green, don't add the blue yet. Okay. So the blue and the yellow are various stages of development. When I say development, not that we started building. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of, for example, when you take the ECOWAS line, we have, we've we engaged people to do a feasibility study, including the engineering designs. They are the final stage. Okay. Um, so that's the ECOWAS line, the blue So line. this is from Lume or Aplau to Elubo? Yes. Along the N1? Well, that's the interesting thing you ask, because we were, wanted to do Accra to Kaswa during the four years. Mm -hmm. The only reason we didn't do it was that the engineering design did not allow us to do it. The first design that was brought to us, it was going to go through Accra. I mean, do you want a third world war, breaking family? I mean, if you can't break my family house, I won't agree. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not going to break So, you may have family. to skirt around it. Then, we decided to, then the people brought a design that they would go to Achimota and go along the N1. Mm -hmm. It may, it would have involved condemning one side of the N1. I said, I can't even take it to cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, those means, the people, they'll beat me up. They'll think I'm crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. look at the traffic in N1. Mm -hmm. And so, and the next design that was suggested was that we go to Kotoku. Then from Kotoku, you have to go to Winneba because from Kotoku, if you come back to Kaswa because of the water, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. 
Now you come back to Winneba and then come to Kaswa, you're talking about 100 kilometers, heavily populated. Why should you spend one and a half hours in a train? And so we have no option maybe than to lift it up. And the thing is that we just received feasibility studies for from Sistra for some railway network which includes that place. Okay. And they are still talking about lifting it up. Okay. So that is the ECOWAS line. Then you have the green one. The uh, green one is the... Now, let me say something about the green one. Yeah. The most successful line you have now is the Accra to Mpakadan one. You have done a great job. I mean, it goes through my constituency or my village, and I've seen that. You are going to cross the river. Yeah. The last plan was to terminate at this side of the Volta River. Yes. You are crossing, which means you're going to erect a new bridge. What went into this decision, and what will be the extra cost to the taxpayer? Okay, what went into this decision was very simple. The first line was supposed to terminate at Akusumbu. Now, terminating at Akusumbu, when I visited the place, I saw three things that uh, let me give the project a second thought. Mm -hmm. The first thing I saw was that where it was terminating is where the Dodi Princess terminates. Yes. Now, if you go to that place, it's rocky. Mm -hmm. you, you can hardly do any expansion. I remember I said, where can we do expansion? They said, we should go to the other side. They took me on some roundabout road to the other side. And the other side, I think somebody's building a hotel or something there. And it's also rocky. The second reason why I started getting my uh, a little queasy about this was that the plan was that they would drill through rock, um, 1.3 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, it would be 60 meters away from the dam. Now, you know, people have argued that, yes, there's controlled drilling you can drill through. I don't have any problem with that. I know they've even drilled under the sea. At what cost? Is there a risk? So I asked the engineers I was with that if you drill this rock 60 meters away from the dam, can it affect the integrity of the dam? Because the dam is a clay dam, clay rock. There I saw that there were as many engineers as there were opinions. I thought lawyers had different opinions, but I thought engineers <laughs> are worse than lawyers. Okay. So I said to them that I need a letter from you, from VRE. If you say we can do it, let me have a letter. I'm not going to take this rap for, I mean, just telling me. And within a month, I received a letter from them advising that they cannot confirm whether it will affect the integrity or not. So it's better we don't try it. The next thing was that this plan was done in 2007 as a port to port project under Professor Amen Between 2007 and 2017, all these terrorism issues had arisen. So I asked myself that. You have a train with 500 people on board, 1,000 people on board, going through your most, your biggest infrastructure project. And most In terms of power? Yes, and perhaps most important, because mm -hmm. water is the cheapest sort of power. Mm -hmm. What if somebody blows it up in this day and age? So you don't want people, and if you're in a car, they set you. You don't want people going by this plan. So maybe we should So security threats. Security, expansion, and so on. So, yes. You're going so, to you know, you decided to cross the river. We have the Atimpoku Bridge there. Explain to us why the train will not go over the Atimpoku Bridge, and you have to create a parallel bridge just a few meters from the Atimpoku, and at what cost? Okay. So, what happened was that, the, 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 first of all, um, the engineers advised that they have to do an independent rail bridge. And they looked at the best place to cross. They, they were looking at the narrowest place, the place that won't cause so much problem. And they decided on just before Sinchi, yeah. the Sinchi resort. Where the ferry used to Yes, dock. and it goes across uh, to a place where the old, uh, old Akradi. Mm -hmm. Now, that bridge is 300 kilometers. And then it will go in a circular route to Japan and come and land at uh, Pakadat. Okay. It increased the length of the project from about 80 kilometers to about 93 kilometers. The cost was an additional $48 million, not mm -hmm. just for the bridge, but also for the extra about 10 kilometers Extension. of rail line, also stations that were happening and so on. We thought it was not a cost too much. The cost of not doing it was much more dangerous. So would it still terminate where a ferry will carry goods from the Tema Harbor or Tema Port through the river, or now your plan is to continue with this line all the way to Yendi and perhaps join the Tamale? The line, if you look at the master plan, you mm -hmm. see that within the Volta River, mm -hmm. there's a blue uh, line that has been marked. So it's going to do two things. Okay. It will give you options. Okay. When you get there, uh, there will be a port. Okay. The port is being developed by the private sector in, consu in consultation okay. with us. Okay. And we can use the water to go up to Bupe okay. or to Yape. Finally, my question still holds. Out of 4,000, how no. many lines have you done? How many kilometers your, have you done so your, far? Your, your question is not a fair question. I'll give you a simple reason why. 
because we have you, you were just telling me about the ship. Mm -hmm. For us to do a railway development, we have to negotiate all these yeah, things. But if you so come in, please let me finish. Yes. Yeah, so let me finish, please. Uh -huh. so okay, I'll come back. Okay. So uh, me too, I'll, no, I'll, I'll also no answer. Mm -hmm. So out of this total, we are developing, apart from the line from Tichiman to Hameli, which we are now going to give out for, uh, for, for, for feasibility, feasibility. Mm -hmm. and the line from Lumi to Elubu, which is undergoing feasibility, mm -hmm. all the other lines, we've completed the feasibility. Okay. This is paperwork. No, I want to, you see, feasibility you can't, feasibility you can't, it includes, includes, it yeah. includes the design. Yes. And yes. we've started the process of procurement as well. Yes. You know, but my point is that no, there's you, no hard rail on the ground. That's what I just want to say. But you can't do hard rail unless you want to go to prison. I understand. And, and when I go to prison, you won't visit me. I may bring you no, a half, I, I half ball I, of I, I don't thinking. trust you. But you see, when you <laughs> say, when you say yeah. that within 5 to 15 years, Ghana yeah. should have 4,000 kilometers, that's yeah figure is measurable we have yeah. a decade and a half to measure yeah. we have a number of kilometers to measure by you have been minister for four years how many of these promise of yours have you delivered because i don't expect that you do four thousand have you done 100 have you done 10 have you done one total it doesn't matter which part of the country how many kilometers of rail track have you constructed since you became minister or I, since I, you, I, I, you see the point that we have constructed we are constructing Temati mm -hmm. which is 93 kilometers. Okay. We have awarded contracts and started construction from Takradi to Honibali, which is 102 kilometers. Tomorrow we are signing a contract. We started the process of constructing from Kumasi to Buasi and a, a branch line to Ejisu, which is a total of 81 kilometers. Mm -hmm. The line, the 303 kilometers from Accra to Kumasi, we have completed um, the process okay. of choosing a strategic Great. investment. Awesome. So I'll tell you that, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, the process construction and the process of awarding contracts is about half of the line, no about 2,000 kilometers. No, about 2,000. Yeah. But in terms of physical line on the ground, I have seen one run through Shy Hills, through Loam, and, con uh, Loam and continue to... Um, it's if you go to the, the west... One being done by AFCON. If you go to the western region, mm -hmm. they've also started the one to Huni Valley. So that's the Huni Valley one. Yeah. How many kilometers have you done to Mpakadan? How many kilometers have you done to Huni Valley? Well, in Pakadan, we've done about 70 kilometers. Okay. The one to Huni Valley, they've done about... They've done up to... They are doing up to Angu Manso, which is okay. about 30 kilometers. They are okay. doing the, okay. the bridge workers. So Let's leave the map for a while. Let's come back to our viewers, if you may. Okay. Um, <laughs> How many working trains do we have in Ghana as we speak? So that in the morning, how many trains do we have that spark or start their engines and carry commercial? And I'm interested in the ones that transport passengers. How many do we have in Ghana? We have the Ghana trains, the one that is painted Ghana colors. The Atamil's one? Well, Kufo one. Two were, two were purchased in Kufo's time. Okay. The Akra Tema ones and yes. two were purchased in Atamil's time. Okay. The Akra Tema one, one had a problem. So there's one running just now. So there's one from Accra to, to Tema. Tema. Yes. Okay. One from, so is that the same one that runs to Amasaman? It's not. No, no. So then there's also the Atamos one, which runs in the western region. Okay. From Takradi to Sekendi. Then what we did was that we repaired one, which is the blue one, which goes to, to Isao. Okay. And we repaired another one, which goes to Takwa. Okay. So how many trees? Okay, so please. there are four so, trees? So, so, so then came, so there are four trees. No, the, one of them in Accra has problems, so mm -hmm. they, they dropped it. And okay. we're going to bring the manufacturers to repair it. So they, today so in Greater Accra, no train moves? No, because the Ghana Railway Company Limited has decided that they will reintroduce the train service in a systematic manner. Mm -hmm. So what they've done is that they're going to start with Sekedi Takwadi. They've gone, please, they've gone for their test run. The Ghana Railway Development Authority will certify the train, mm -hmm. then it will start. From there, they'll do Accra Tema. Okay. So, as we speak today, mm. Tuesday, yeah. how many trains are mobile and how many of them actually all are? The, all, the, all the cargo trains, the freight trains are mobile. Okay, that's cargo. I'm interested in the, passenger. The, the pass I'm coming. All the freight trains are mobile. They've mm -hmm. always been mobile. Okay. The passenger trains, the Accra Tema 1 is being prepared and also the one to Sekai Takwa is being prepared. These trains are small trains. Okay. Five, coaches. Five, five coaches, six okay. coaches each. And what is happening is that when we try to bring in 
spacing, this uh, COVID mm -hmm. matters. Uh, there was a war on our hands. Mm -hmm. And so what the railway company have said is that for us to start moving the trains commercially, we have to subsidize. So as we speak, not yeah. a single passenger train is no. moving. Question, what percentage of bauxite was coming to the port of Takradi by rail before you came? We are told zero. zero percent. Before I came, zero. And it's still zero percent. Because we haven't reached Awasu. Okay. Bauxite is Awasu. So it's zero. Oh. Nine to ten percent of manganese from Takwa and Suta comes to rail or to the port by rail before 2017. Have you increased this percentage? Well, 9 to 10 percent of what? Before of manganese? No, no. You, you know, I, I thought you knew mathematics. But before 2017, it was 2 million tons that was coming. Okay. Just as 5 million tons. So a percentage of what? Okay. Because what is happening is that you have to talk about actual figures. Of the tonnage of production, how much, what percentage goes by road and what percentage goes by rail? When you compare percentages, you miss the point. Okay. That's what I'm telling you. What, how much is 10% of two, 2 million? Have you increased, yes, increased the volume of manganese conveyance via rail from Nsuta to Takradi? What has happened is that the Nsuta to Takradi line mm -hmm. is the same line that we are developing mm -hmm. on the Western line. Okay. It has been shutting down for one month and so on. Mm -hmm. And so that is why government gave a capital injection. If we say we are going to continue moving the cargo by rail, mm -hmm. then we can't develop the line. Okay. Because the narrow gate, you see, the only double line we have in this country is up to Mansu. Mm -hmm. Mansu. Mm -hmm. After Mansu, it's a single line. Mm -hmm. We've awarded a contract to Huni Valley. To dualize it? No, we've awarded a standard gauge contract up to Huni Valley. Okay. Even the double line is side by side. Okay. So what happens is that the people, they've written to us now that they want to close down the line for a month. We have to decide do we want a new standard gauge line? or we want to uh, continue lifting manganese and answering your question. Okay. Because what is happening is that up to the time that we start, we finish development of our standard gauge line to Takwa, you realize that the Ghana Railway Company Limited will not be in a position to move a lot of manganese, not because it doesn't have railway tracks or so, but because they are working on the line. Okay. What will also happen, that is why government has given them a capital injection in order to, to, to enable them to continue to operate under freight, as they call it. We are told that modern coaches that were brought into the country in 2016, they are sleeping at the ports of Takradi. Why? Uh, which modern coaches? I'm not aware of that. Were there coaches brought in 2016? I'm that not that every coach, the two at the most trees. They are, they, are they working? Of course, those are the ones that are being used for Takradi to how, how come then you've had to renovate Rollins' coaches to put on the Takwa line? We went to South Africa and we said to them, Translate, I want to buy trains. And they said that, well, they, they don't have new trains because trains are not bought like cars. But they said, your trains are newer than ours. And we saw their trains. I said, how come? What do you mean? They said, our trains are 1975. Your trains are 1995. And a railway train can last for about 30 years. So instead of buying new trains, go and fix your old trains. And so what is happening is that the life of a train is not like the life of a car. Mm -hmm. And another reason is that we are moving from narrow gauge to standard gauge. And so we are not going to buy new narrow gauge, a lot of new narrow gauge uh, coaches and so on, because it can't go on standard gauge. Let me explain to you, the gauge is the distance between the two wheels. The two wheels. Mm -hmm. And so if you buy narrow gauge trains, it's and then in four years time, you move completely to standard gauge. So the trains we have now cannot use the, 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 the tracks we are building? No, all okay. the trains we have now are narrow gauge. You have said that we are going to bring in 30 more 35, stand, 35 standard new, gauge not trains, more, new. new. Yes. What's the state of affairs with that? We signed a contract with the, the company, Don Fang. Uh, we had approval from Parliament. It's now with Ministry of Finance. They are going up and down, asking themselves questions, putting the final um, condition precedence in place. We've done the value for money audit and so on. And so... Have we paid? Have you given them money, the contract? Oh, the it's a loan. It's not, it's we're not going to pay cash. Okay. I mean, it's about $230 million. So it's a supplier's credit, which okay. is being supplied, which is being bought by the country. I the see. Is, uh, so when will the trains touch? Well, according to the contract, when we finish all the conditions present, within 12 months, we'll supply the first set. Any idea when this will be? No, I don't want to hazard a guess. Would I it be 2021 or 2022? 
I want it to be 2021. 2021. I want it, but it depends on the commencement date. Or 30 at a go, or you, you come in, they come in. I thought I just said that they will supply the first 12. So the first 12 comes before, before 18 by, months. Okay. The next, the balance. And we are progressing gradually to 35. Yes. Finally. But, what, but what we are doing is that, mm -hmm. now what we are doing is that every contract that we sign now, we are putting in the contract the supply of some trains. Mm -hmm. Because it's a simpler process rather than to buy trains by itself. So okay. you see that the Huni Valley line has supply of trains. Mm -hmm. the, the line we are signing tomorrow in Kumasi has the supply of trains. Okay. I've seen two years ago a publication that you had signed contract for Accra to have sky trains. I've looked up in the sky several times. I haven't seen one. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up. And it is, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to do it. In 2017, we signed an Remember of understanding with a group who said they wanted to build a sky train. In 2018, we went to South Africa and we signed a concession agreement and we signed it with conditions priesthood. For example, they wanted me to give away 30 years and agree that they'll have a concession. They are bringing their money. It has nothing to do with Ghana. All we do is that we give them the right of way and so on. So they wanted it for 30 years. I said, listen, I can't give you 30 years until what you give me the provisional sum. You have to give me the final sum before I can take it forward. So we signed it based on condition present that they must come and do the final feasibility. They're going to come this year. Good old COVID came in. A South African company has not come yet. They wrote, I wrote to them in June, so are you still interested? They say they are. But Sistra, at the same time, we asked Sistra to do a feasibility study for us for light rail in Accra. And they confirmed to us that there are many parts of Accra that you cannot do the train on the ground. You have to raise it. The sky train is an elevated train. It's a train that is done on a bridge. It, I've seen people have brought some train that is hanging, magnetic train. No, our type is going to be a bridge, light train. I've seen it in South Africa, Johannesburg. Yes. yes. Mm. Uh, you, you, the, 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 that train, so that's that what you're planning to that's bring? That's what we're planning to bring. But it still remains a rainbow. We can no. only see it, we can't touch it, we can't even get close to it. Well, several years after I, the promise. I don't know. No, no, first of all, let's make ourselves clear, Marasanda. It's not several years, it's two years. It's not a promise that I made in a vacuum. Okay. We signed a contract with people who said they were coming. If you and were speaking to a tree journalist, you say, not train why? If I was speaking to a tree journalist, I would say, that train who South Africa, remember? Hey, I'm not sure COVID is resolved myself. Nasa COVID doesn't mean that we are not doing our work. We are still working. Your ministry is running. Your, your AFCON has resumed the construction, haven't they, on the Mpakadan? AFCON said they will finish. AFCON told us they will finish by August. In December. The president, when they say they will finish by August. Okay. It, no, no, let me finish, please. Okay. Don't I move on. I, 85, no, no, please. Mm -hmm. 85 of their workers got COVID. Do you know what happened? Now they are telling me they will finish next year. Okay. Amandi said they will start laying the track by June. When COVID started, they stopped work. This company was in South Africa. They were supposed to bring people down. So when there was a lockdown, do you want me to go and bring the so company? So until COVID, we can't detain, until COVID is over, we now can't detain. they have to come. The company must come and do the final feasibility okay. before I can agree on a term. Very well. If you ask me, if I had signed 30 years, and you had asked me that was the basis for the 30 years, I couldn't have answered you. Do you know what you would have said? Of air, you know, said that I'm going to collect money, that's why I made it 30 years. Maybe I'm even saying it uh, on air. This is Jogate, yeah. he's <laughs> a minister for railway development. <laughs>